In this video, we're taking a look at a cross section of a spinal cord. In a previous video, we looked at the different regions of the spinal cord, the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. But now we're gonna zoom in on a little cross section on the spinal cord and talk about signals coming in and out, like in a reflex arc, as well as signals going up and down to the brain and back out. We're also gonna take a look at some of the anatomy of the spinal cord cross section. So spinal cord cross section, anatomy and physiology. Let's jump to the whiteboard. And get started. So let's start by drawing a cross section of the spinal cord right here. It's like we've taken this long thin spinal cord and we've sliced a little section of it. We've zoomed in on that and we're going to talk about what's happening in that little cross section. That little cross section of the spinal cord is going to have a couple branches coming off either side. Those branches are going to form a spinal nerve where they come together right here. So I have one pair of spinal nerves drawn on here but you're gonna have 31 pairs of spinal nerves that come out of the spinal cord in all the different sections of that spinal cord. To orient ourselves in the diagram a little bit, here we have the anterior or front side of the spinal cord, and at the top of my diagram, I have the posterior or back side of the spinal cord. So it's kind of like the person's facing us right now. Now, another word for our posterior side is dorsal, and another word for our anterior side is ventral. So we're gonna use the words dorsal and ventral a lot in our diagram here. So where that spinal nerve branches as it enters the spinal cord, we're gonna have something called the dorsal root, and then on the ventral side or anterior side, we'll have the ventral root. Where those come together, we already said, is a spinal nerve. So each spinal nerve coming into the spinal cord is gonna branch off into a dorsal root and a ventral root. The dorsal root is gonna be where signals come into the spinal cord. The ventral root is gonna be where signals go out of the spinal cord. A little bit later in the video, we're gonna map out some neurons on here and take a look at where those signals are traveling. But for now, just know that signals go in through the dorsal and out through the ventral root. Now I've got all this drawn basically the same color, but there's really two types of nervous tissue that are gonna exist in the spinal cord. We're gonna have some white matter and we're gonna have some gray matter. And so on the diagram, I've got it as kind of a lighter yellow and a darker yellow. The darker yellow color here will be the gray matter and the lighter colored yellow is the white matter. So we've got white matter in here and down in there and then in this central part right there we're going to have all of the gray matter so what's the difference between white matter and gray matter what causes this to be white versus gray well white matter is going to have myelinated neurons the axons are the long projections that come out of the neuron they're going to be covered in these myelin sheaths these things are kind of wrapped around the axon in a bunch of spots that's going to speed up the signal or the action potential that travels down the neuron so anywhere we have white matter, we're gonna have myelinated neurons that can send signals pretty quickly. And wherever we have gray matter, we're gonna have unmyelinated neurons that don't have those special myelin sheaths that speed up the signals that they send. It's interesting here in the spinal cord, the gray matter is kind of in the central part with white matter around it. Whereas our brain is the opposite. We've got the gray matter on the outside of the cortex and we've got the white matter kind of on the inside of the brain. It makes it easy to get confused where the white matter and the gray matter is. And the fact that the white matter is surrounding the gray matter as well as the fact that our nerves that are coming in are white matter. That's going to clue us in that the signals coming in from the rest of the body are going to be on myelinated axons. And think about it, they got to travel pretty far. Like if I touch something and signals have to be sent from my finger all the way down my arm to my spinal cord, that's a long distance where not a lot really has to happen besides that signal just has to get there really quickly. And so we have those myelinated neurons that can send that signal really fast. We we'll have unmyelinated neurons in between, and then when signals go back out, like when I tell my arms to move, there's gonna be myelinated neurons that are gonna send the signals back out to the muscles of my arms. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. We're gonna draw that out in just a minute. But first, let's take a look at some anatomy of the spinal cord here and talk about a couple of regions that are in the spinal cord cross section. For sake of my diagram not getting too busy, I've drawn a smaller cross section down in here. So that gray matter is gonna be divided up into three sections that we call the horns. And so we've got the dorsal horn, which is on the dorsal side. We have a lateral horn. So this is kind of sticking off to the side, lateral means to the side. And then we have a ventral horn. So we've got a dorsal, lateral and ventral horn as part of that gray matter of the spinal cord. And we've got these two kind of creases that go into the spinal cord. And so on the ventral side, we have what we call the ventral median fissure. Ventral because it's anterior or ventral side. Median because it's kind of in the middle of the spinal cord. It's not lateral, it's medial. And then fissure is whenever we have some sort of like crevice that's uh, coming in. On the dorsal side, we have kind of the same thing. We've got the dorsal median sulcus. It's on the dorsal side, it's medial, and it's a sulcus. It's an indentation in nervous tissue. So the gray matter has these horns. We've got the dorsal median sulcus, the ventral median fissure, and then the white matter we can divide up into three sections as well that we're gonna label dorsal, lateral, and ventral. And we're gonna call that the dorsal funiculus, the lateral funiculus, 
and the ventral funiculus. A funiculus is just a bundle of neurons that are gonna send signals up and down and they're surrounded by some connective tissue. And more specifically, they're talking about these regions in the spinal cord in the white matter. So the dorsal funiculus here, the lateral funiculus here, and then the ventral funiculus down and the ventral side. Finally, you'll notice on diagrams, there's this little kind of tiny circle right in the middle of the gray matter. That little circle in the middle of the gray matter is called the central canal, and it's filled with cerebral spinal fluid. If you were to follow that little canal all the way up into the brain, it would connect to the ventricles of the brain where the cerebral spinal fluid is produced. And so that's how nutrients and stuff will get between the brain and the spinal cord. It's gonna go through this little canal that's filled with cerebral spinal fluid. So not about sending signals, but rather about sending nutrients where they need to go along the spinal cord in the brain. So there was some anatomy of the cross section of the spinal cord. Now let's talk a little bit about what's happening in this cross section of the spinal cord. Let's take a look at the physiology here. So I'm gonna draw in a few neurons. I'm gonna start with a sensory neuron. A sensory neuron is gonna be any neuron that's sending signals toward the brain. So it could be that I touch something and the signal's traveling along my arm into my spinal cord. So our sensory neuron will have a signal coming in through here. It's gonna pass by a cell body and then through the rest of the axon into the gray matter. We'll draw some arrows to show the direction of that signal. And this is all in white matter, so we must have myelinated axons. So I'm gonna draw that in there. These are all the myelin sheaths that are gonna insulate that neuron and make that signal travel faster through that sensory neuron. And you'll notice where that cell body is on our sensory neuron, we've got this kind of bulge in the dorsal root. That's called the dorsal root ganglion. And the reason that bulges out like that is because this is where all of the cell bodies of all of the many sensory neurons that are coming through there, those cell bodies are all bunched up in this area right there. So it has to bulge out to make room for all of those cell bodies. Dorsal root ganglion, the sensory neuron cell bodies. If you ever run across the other ganglia throughout the nervous system, just know that those are where the cell bodies of neurons are located. Once that signal reaches the end of the sensory neuron, it's gonna synapse with something called an interneuron. Now the interneuron is completely located in the gray matter here, so it's not gonna contain any myelin, and it's gonna transmit a signal from that sensory neuron down to the next neuron, which is gonna be a motor neuron. Now not every reflex arc that we're drawing here is gonna have an interneuron. There's some reflex arcs that go directly from a sensory neuron to a motor neuron and back. So just a two neuron reflex arc. And here I'm drawing a three neuron reflex arc so that we can talk about all the types of the neurons that we have. So that signal is gonna be traveling down this direction back out of the spinal cord. So it's gonna be going through the anterior root. Remember we said signals come in through the dorsal and then out through the anterior root. And we're back in the white matter. So we're gonna have a myelinated neuron that can send those signals really quickly. That whole loop there is called a reflex arc. And to give that example again, let's say I touch a hot stove. The signal has to travel through the sensory neuron to my spinal cord through an interneuron and then back out through a motor neuron that's gonna tell my arm to jerk back because I just touched something hot. Even before that signal of touching the hot stove gets all the way up to my brain, that reflex arc can happen and tell my arm to move back really quickly before I even have time to register consciously what just happened. Hence, it's a reflex. But if I do touch a hot stove with my hand, that signal is gonna make it up to my brain. If I touched it with my foot or my leg, that signal would not get up to my brain because of my spinal cord injury. But if I touched it with my arm, that signal makes it up to my brain. I haven't drawn that yet, so I need to draw that into the diagram. That's where the interneuron comes in. The interneuron will also send a signal somewhere else. In this case, it's gonna send that signal up to the brain. Now, it's gonna cross over to the other side of the spinal cord whenever it does this. So that sensory neuron is gonna send its signal all the way up through here. It's gonna synapse with the interneuron. That's gonna continue the reflex arc, but it's also gonna send a signal across and then up through one of these ascending tracks of the spinal cord so that signal can make it all the way up to my brain and I can register what just happened. So what is all of this white matter in this section here, the section there, and the section there, those three funiculi? Those are gonna be where the ascending going up and the descending going down tracks of the spinal cord are. Signals have to travel from the brain down through the spinal cord and out. Signals also have to travel from our body parts, like when we touch something, to the spinal cord and back up, those signals will travel through ascending tracks. We're not gonna name all of the ascending and descending tracks, but I do wanna draw it kind of where they are so you can get a sense of that. So in light blue here, I'm drawing all of the ascending tracks of the spinal cord. The interneuron that I happen to draw here was going up toward the brain, so it's gotta go through one of those ascending tracks. So all those light blue sections, those are ascending tracks, and if you notice, those are located in the dorsal funiculus as well as the lateral funiculus. They also exist on both sides. It's not just 
the right side here. If we have a sensory signal coming through this side over here and it goes through the dorsal root, then that would come over to the other side and go up an ascending track uh, here on the left side and up. So I just drew the ascending tracks on one side to keep the diagram more simple, but it's on both sides. And then here in pink, I've drawn the descending tracks. So these are gonna be the sections where signals are gonna travel from the brain. These are gonna be motor neurons going from the brain down through the spinal cord. Those are gonna go down through these different regions that I've labeled here in pink. Those are all located either in the lateral funiculus or the ventral funiculus. So those are all the descending tracks. To summarize the physiology here, we have two things that are happening primarily. We've got reflex arcs, where a sensory signal is coming in and then a motor signal is coming back out. And then we have signals that are traveling up the spinal cord and then down the spinal cord. And those signals are going up and down interneurons that are located in these blue sections for the ascending signals. And then the pink sections here for the descending signals. So let's recap all of that one more time and then I'll give you a chance to practice on your own. In our cross section of the spinal cord, we have dorsal roots, ventral roots, and those are gonna be the branches of each of the spinal nerves that are coming into the spinal cord. We have two types of nervous tissue. We've got white matter, which contains myelinated neurons, and we have gray matter, which contains unmyelinated neurons. Those myelin sheaths on the myelinated neurons speed up the action potential or the signal that the nerves send. Some anatomical areas of this cross section of the spinal cord include the dorsal, lateral, and ventral horns of the gray matter, as well as the dorsal, lateral, and ventral funiculi of the white matter. So dorsal, lateral, and ventral. We have the ventral median fissure and the dorsal median sulcus, as well as the central canal, which contains the cerebrospinal fluid that allows nutrients to get throughout the brain and spinal cord. The spinal cord is involved in reflex arcs, which includes sensory neurons taking information in, like when we touch something, those signals will be transmitted along the axon of the sensory neuron past the cell bodies, which are located in the dorsal root ganglia. Remember, it's not just one neuron involved here. There's actually lots and lots of neurons that go through each of these nerves. So that signal travels along the sensory neuron. It's gonna synapse with an interneuron. The interneuron is gonna synapse with the motor neuron. The motor neuron is gonna send the signal out to some muscle in the body to tell some part of my body to move. For example, if I touch the hot stove, the signal goes to my spinal cord back out to a muscle in my arm, and I pull my arm back. That's the reflex arc, it happens very quickly. But those signals also need to get up to our brain so that we can consciously tell what's going on. And so whenever that sensory signal comes in and it synapses with the interneuron, the interneuron is gonna to cross to the other side of the spinal cord and send a signal up an ascending tract to the brain where our brain can consciously register, ow, that's hot. Our brain can send signals back out through the spinal cord though, and it'll send those signals from the brain, through from the cortex of the brain up here, down through descending tracks, which I have here in pink, and those neurons will then send signals out through motor neurons to tell our body to move. That would be examples of conscious control, like whenever I tell my arm to move in some way. All right, here's a blank diagram. The only way to learn this really well is to test yourself, so pause the video, see if you can label all of the different parts of this diagram, as well as explain what's happening in all these different parts of the diagram. All right, let's see how you did. We've got the dorsal root and the ventral root, those join together to form a spinal nerve. We've got white matter as well as gray matter. White matter has myelin, gray matter has no myelin. We've got the dorsal root ganglia, which contain the sensory neuron cell bodies. We've got the three horns of the gray matter, the dorsal, lateral, and ventral horns. We have the three funiculi, the dorsal, lateral, and ventral funiculi of the white matter. We've got the dorsal median sulcus, as well as the ventral median sulcus and the central canal, which contains cerebrospinal fluid. We talked about the reflex arc that contains a sensory neuron, which transmits the signal to an interneuron, which transmits the signal back out through a motor neuron, completing the reflex arc. The interneuron can also send signals across and up to the brain. Signals traveling up to the brain are gonna be traveling through ascending tracks, and motor signals traveling from the brain out to tell our body parts to move are gonna travel through descending tracks. Like I said before, I've got another video where I go over the different regions of the spinal cord, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, coccygeal, and talk about what each of those controls. I have lots of other videos planned, both on the spinal cord as well as other body systems. So if you're looking for some anatomy and physiology content, I've got more coming your way soon. So do all the little stuff here, and we'll see you in the next video.